So if you ever been out looking for a, a new fishing spot or somewhere new to go to and don't really want to waste your gas driving all the way to find somewhere new and find out you can't even do anything there or uh, it's blocked off, things like that. Well, we're going to show you how to get around that today and uh, keep some money in your pocket and give you a better experience. Stay tuned. So, welcome to Hardwick Angling. This is the very first episode, guys. And like I said, we're going to be covering some new ways to find fishing spots around your area or anywhere in the world for that matter without ever having to leave where you're sitting at, whether it's a hotel if you're on the road or sitting in your car, wherever you're parked or even in the comfort of your own home. So, uh, what we're going to do is cover some of the methods of doing that. Now, if you're new here for the first time, um, this is a brand new channel that we're starting out. We used to be on another channel in the past called Whisker Sticks Fishing. Uh, it was tied to the brand and company that I ran uh, for Tackle, which um, I still rep the merch every now and then. But uh, we, we closed those doors and we laid the business to rest and I thought it would be only respectful to do the same with the YouTube channel too. So if you're coming over from Whisker Sticks Fishing to here on Hardwick Angling, uh, welcome back and uh, thank you for staying with us. If you're new here for the first time, I hope you guys uh, hang around and follow along with us on all the new adventures we're going to undertake. And that's kind of the reason why I'm starting the channel with this video first, is before you go out and fish, you kind of got to know where to go. And if you're looking for somewhere new, then uh, these some of these tools and tips can help you guys uh, find some of those new places without having to waste gas, having to drive all over town, or um, waste your time. So. This will be a huge time saver for you, a huge penny pincher for you. And I think it's only fair that since we are starting this new channel with this new episode, uh, we use these tactics to find new spots that we haven't filmed or uh, visited before. And that's what we're going to do here in a little bit. We're going to go inside, uh, hop on the computer, and I'm going to show you some techniques you can use to check out some new areas if you're looking for something fresh. And uh, what that's going to entail is things like Google Maps, Google Earth, and uh, Street View. We're going to utilize those to uh, kind of scope the areas out, get the lay of the land, and see what it's like before we even get there. And once we uh, kind of cover the basis of how all that works, we're going to pick three spots together. Um, places that I haven't been to before. We're going to try to hit a different body of water for each one. And uh, use that opportunity to go out to those places, film a video there. And we'll see how accurate it is uh, compared to what we've seen on the computer today. So without further ado, let's cut over to it and see what we can find. All right, guys, so we're at the computer here now, and I'm going to show you a couple things you can use to check out the lay of the land here and survey the area all around you, anywhere in the world, really, without uh, having to leave home and waste gas. So, uh, like I said, the goal here is we're going to pick out a couple places to go that we've never been to. And I'm going to show you some of the tactics I use to find these places when I go out and film. And hopefully it can help you find some new places to explore and fish too. Nothing cooler than uncharted water. So, the main tool we're going to be using here is Google Maps, uh, which I already got pulled up here. I kind of got zoomed out um, over to Tri-State area here. Uh, you see Indianapolis, Cincinnati's where we're at, there's Columbus. So we're going to zoom in a little bit and uh, kind of check out the area. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention, uh, we're going to switch windows and cover here just for a second. We'll go back in more detail later is uh, checking local river levels and using other tools like Navionics mobile web app, which uh, a lot of you boat guys are already familiar with, but bank fishermen don't get to utilize a lot of this stuff. So. Um, hopefully this will enlighten some people and teach them some new things because that's kind of the whole point otherwise why are we doing this right <laughs> all right so basically what I want to find here is I want to find a lake I want to find somewhere new at a lake that I haven't been to and uh, somewhere new maybe along the Ohio River whether it's uh, on the Kentucky or Ohio side or maybe even somewhere towards Indiana and uh, maybe one of the other rivers like the Great Miami or the Little Miami. Uh, the Great Miami is pretty much my home. I've visited a lot of places along this stretch. Uh, you can kind of see it here. Comes up the Ohio here and rolls all the way up towards Dayton. This is another major tributary, the Licking River that goes into Kentucky. It goes really, really far in. 
and not too far further upstream is the Little Miami River. And these are the three main river systems that are around the greater Cincinnati area. Uh, there's another one that branches off called the Whitewater River, which is right here. And it forks up into a couple creeks and tributaries. And this right here is, or no, that's not it, it's up here. Right here is a cool place called Campbell's Lake Preserve. Uh, so we might be able to look into that a little bit. And then you got places like county parks, like Miami Whitewater Forest. Um, Winton Woods is real popular right here. That's a big lake, um, although not very deep. And then you have other state reservoirs like East Fork uh, and Rocky Fork, Acton Lake, places like that. So we're gonna cover some of the major bodies of water and then maybe look at some of the little tiny specks here too and see what we can find and we'll go from there. Uh, so what I would like to start with is just the, the basic map mode uh, where you can kind of easily identify water with blue for creeks and lakes and rivers and then you also have a satellite mode which makes it a little harder to see until you're zoomed up on something but it does help and uh, the third utility is street view to kind of get a live in-person lay of the land without leaving the house so let's maybe uh let's start with a lake so uh i know east fork's really popular i'll probably end up going there but let's see if we can find something a little bit different and uh i think i've been here before grand valley preserve let's uh throw that on satellite and kind of see what it looks like okay so as you can see here, just uh, for personal experience with mine, with this satellite view, if it's usually a lighter color like this, it's normally shallower. And you can kind of see the indication from all the land that you can still see under the surface. You can see where uh, the slopes kind of shoot out uh, to indicate it's shallower. And over here towards uh, this section, it's going to be a little bit deeper. Um, you can see a little bit of land kind of forking out so this will indicate some cover and You got a peninsula here, but for the most part outside of a couple shallow spaces like this um, This is all deep water and this could indicate that this is kind of sloping down and For something like this around these hard edges that could be a shelf and uh, those are some things to consider this is this kind of seems like the the dirt line before it shelves off into deeper water so you can use these satellite views to somewhat gauge a topographic uh, scale of what's going on and there's some ponds here and right here's the little Miami uh, so just to kind of cover what some things look like from a bird's eye view of the river systems here especially these smaller rivers you can see where things kind of get deeper and uh, more calm and uh, you got some shallows here where the water's rifling over the gravel and rocks. And uh, it kind of helps you gauge where the, uh, the current flow is and what the main channels look like. So it looks like it kind of zigzags and snakes its way around. And uh, you get to, you know, check, over, check other things around the surrounding area like close by roads. You could uh, drop a pin down and if there's a street view, it'll pull up here and you can click on that picture. And you might be able to get a lay of the land if it's close by. So just for an example. And it shows you cool stuff like this. So we got no trespassing signs here. Private property signs. So we know to leave that alone. And this little arrow up here lets you go back. And this is where that no trespassing sign was leading to. It was leading this dirt road. So we knew on the other side of that greenery is where the river was. Bridges are cool because you can always get a really cool view of what everything looks like around it. You can see it's shallow and deeper on this side. Uh, we don't know the depth, but you kind of get an idea of what the bank line will look like if you're trying to access something from like a pull-off and see if it's like a, a steep bank or a shallow bank, if it looks like people are maybe dropping kayaks or canoes in. Looks like there's something over there. But that, that's kind of what everything looks like. So let's zoom out and go back to trying to find a lake. Some of them will be labeled, uh, some won't. This looks like uh, something residential. So let's switch back to satellite. Oh, okay, so it's one of those like cool Richie neighborhoods with a golf course built in. So let's see if I can get any closer. And uh, Let's see, it'll let me zoom in a little bit. You can kind of see what's going on back there. Just a different view. Uh, but that's not what we're here for today, so let's move on. 
I'm going to try to keep this a little bit short and sweet, but I don't want you guys to miss out on any details. So I think the best bet would be to maybe try something like East Fork Lake. It's a big, huge state reservoir. It's known for its catfish there. Heavily populated with channel cats. There's blue cats and flatheads in there also. It's got other things like a uh, big striper, spoonbill. Um, and every other species in between all the way down to bluegill so uh, no matter what you're targeting you can catch it at East Fork this is the dam area here and this is the spillway I know a lot of people go here to fish for channel cat and on this side this is where the water runs into the lake uh, this is a fork off of the Little Miami River you can actually see the name here that flows into the lake over on this end and it kind of flows through the, the roadbed and everything out this way. So there is a little bit of a current into it. It's not something like uh, what you would see down in like Tennessee in the big pool that's on the river itself uh, where it has a current. This is just like a standalone reservoir man-made. And uh, you can kind of see some icons like a uh, public beach. Over here are some trails. The dotted lines indicate trails that you can hike. And down here there's other creek inlets and stuff all kinds of bodies of water flowing into this thing and uh, there's ramps marked and if you zoom in a little more it actually labels uh, some other ramps and even fishing sites like this there's a lot of places to check out and if you want a better view when it comes to uh, reservoirs is that Navionics tool so let's pull that up and you can see right here is East Fork Lake and as you zoom in on it the reservoirs are already preloaded into the web app so you don't need uh, data cards or anything like you do with the river systems and it gives you a topographic layout of the lake um, so if you don't know how to read that basically each line represents a depth and the closer they are together the the steeper the incline or the drop and if you have big holes like this uh, like where it's going 48 50 here so this line in between is 49 feet 50 51, 52, 53, 54. So this is like a higher point, like a hilltop. The lower the number, the shorter the depth. Uh, like you can see a one right here. And uh, the bigger the number, the deeper it is. So right here, in between here, is a big deep flat. And this is the shoreline, and it steeps really, really quick, almost like a vertical drop down to the 40-something feet, and then it slowly tapers to this flat. So right here would be kind of like a valley. Um, we got ramps and piers indicated for boat ramps uh, this is a dock and it looks like this average area is uh, around in the 30s getting closer to 40 in a couple spots and as we move farther east up into some of the inlets it's gonna get a little shallower so this looks like a really really steep part of the lake it goes down into the 30s but all those close lines together means it's gonna like whoop, drop deep this is a nice shallow flat area here and it'll also indicate other things like these dotted lines this is the old roadbed. So this used to be a road at one time. Think of it like the, the Mariana Trench of the lake. And as we get back over into here, uh, it's going to show some more shallower content. Now this ain't picking up anything. Because you see the deepest part here, there's a 15 foot depth pool. But the rest is basically not registered. So that's like a foot to two feet deep all the way through. And then the, the creek might go a little bit deeper, but... Um, I have been back here before and it can be kind of fun. It's shallow areas like this are good to be known for to uh, uh, Catching your bait fish so like shad shiners creek chubs bluegill everything we use for live bait bullheads You're gonna go to areas like that to find a lot of that stuff This is another ramp and it's got some coves that are shallow. So that might be good to go throw a net There's another cove here now over here on this side is where it's gonna get really 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 deep uh, You're starting to see stuff like 70s 80s 90s and uh, even 100 feet so this is the dam uh, there's a ramp right here you see how shallow it is four feet six feet and then it tanks all the way down to 100 you don't want to fish on the bottom there nothing's going to be 100 feet deep there's not enough oxygen uh, so there's going to be thermoclines and stuff that you deal with and oxygen uh, limits but uh, the surrounding area these shelves fish totally hang around all that stuff too so let's uh Kind of take this back over to the river and from a bank man point of, point of view you don't get the topography like you do with the other ones but there are other indications like waypoints uh no wake zones there's plenty of stuff to take note of these yellow dots right here are actually icebreakers. this is the main current of the ohio river on this side and this is the serpentine wall 
So I know this is a, a steep drop and they have those icebreakers there to keep the water open for, um, uh, what do you call it, barges. This is the riverboat landing. So there's, there's landmarks marked there too, so you kind of know what's going on. And if you do have the card data to pull up uh, to get more info out of it, more power to you. But this is a basic tool that you can use uh, from home and kind of gauge some areas. And tying in with that, uh, since I live right by the Cincinnati downtown area, the Ohio River, um, if you live near one of these big rivers, uh, whether weather, weather service monitors them, you can uh, simply Google it and say, for, for, for me, it'd be Ohio River level. First result, Ohio River, Cincinnati. And it'll give you a forecast of the water level. So you can kind of gauge if uh, you're going to be fishing flooded waters, if it's going to be low and calm. Uh, it'll help you gauge the current and things like that. So, And this is the location of where that's being surveyed at. And if you notice, right by the Licking River mouth. So this is an area I frequent a lot. And I know that this particular area, stretch of the river, is going to be behaving that way. We, um, go back to the lake here and we'll pick a spot here at East Fork to try and see what we can find. So let's switch over to satellite view. Now this is that shallow area was uh, covered earlier in avionics and around here was that 15 foot hole so it looks like there's a sandbar here and then after that it drops and this is all shallow. As we zoom in we can see that 15 foot area is going to be around here. Looks like there's a beach area there. This is the perimeter trail that's labeled. So this is something that's hikeable. And over here you got all this standing timber. So we know that it's going to be kind of like our, our uh, Cincinnati version of a mangrove. It's going to be shallow water with a lot of vegetation, a lot of bait fish population. And uh, us knowing being avid catfish anglers that flatheads especially love uh, going into the shallows to prey on this stuff because that's where their food goes. So this might not be a bad flathead area. Something else I spot is this. I see wheel tracks. So this is something we could park in and it looks like there's an opening under here underneath the tree line. And I see right there, that oh, there's actually a car. Um, we can't get no street view. It's not available, but we can kind of follow this and see where it goes. So it looks like there is in fact a road. You can see the gap in the trees. There's the road. No street view there. But what you can do is save this on the Google Maps of your phone and we know that this road comes through here. Right? So let's backtrack. Now we can see where the roads are branching out. And it looks like this goes all the way up to here. Trail this back over to here and we got a main road, so 133. There's a street view there if you need it. So you can kind of like set your GPS to this and then manually follow the road down. And we know that it eventually runs here. Uh, so that's kind of one spot to look. I was more interested in those coves and that muscle bed area. So no street view here, but it looks like there's bank line over here. There's bank line here, plenty of parking. That looks like a bathroom house so you got somewhere to use the bathroom and you got these uh, shallows so this might not be a bad spot to try let's go ahead and mark this and the way we're gonna do that is click and click these coordinates we're gonna pull up this little menu here you hit save and we'll just mark it with a star so now when I click off of it I got it there I got my big yellow dot. So that's one spot we can look at. And then I was interested in uh, that other dock. There it is. So it looks like it's by the public beach. This is some really dark, deep water. And we seen with the Navionic that it is pretty deep. So we're looking 30, 40 feet. And right off the bank line, it's uh, dropping from the teens down to 30. So we could fish along this shelf. And just to compare with that other ramp we were at, with the coves, we can see the depth here too. And it looks like uh, it's shallow right here in the coves and then it tapers off into the 20s and there's a little spot here in the 30s. And even also on this side. So we got some deep water to fish, we got some holes, we got flats, and we got slopes. So a lot of potential cover here. So I think I might wanna mark this spot too. Click those coordinates, save. 
And then we'll pick one of these spots to, to check out. And they're not too far from each other. So it looks like if I had to go from one to the other, I'd probably just come down around up this road and I'm right there. So maybe like 15 minutes. So there's our lake spot. We're going to try East Fork Lake for one video. Let's, uh cover something on the Ohio River. What I like to look for in the map mode on the main rivers like this is little inlets and it doesn't always play out the same on satellite. It might be bigger or smaller than what it really looks like. So I'm not really actually seeing much there. It could be under the trees but it looks like it's labeled as a harbor so it might be like a private property thing where people keep their boats stashed. So let's look and see if we could find something a little different. Here's a creek mouth. Four mile. Looks like it comes in there, stretches up here. All right, so here's the creek under the trees. Well, what's the surrounding area look like? Anywhere to park? Doesn't look like it. At this point, you can kind of leave it in satellite and see what pulls up into it. This is five mile. This would be cool to try, but this looks like private property here. So clearly you could physically access it, but are we able to uh, pull in there? Not seeing those signs. But I don't think it'll let us go back. So all you can really do is zoom in and try to find something. Looks like there's some kind of sign there. That could be a gate. I don't think that's going to be a good fit for us. So let's kind of comb around a little bit more. And let's see what we could find. And you just kind of got to play with it, you know. I'll switch back and forth between the, uh, the satellite and the map view and see what pulls up. Alright, so this says Big Indian Creek. And I've actually been here before, so I'm not going to go here, but I'm going to showcase it. And this is how I found it. So you got the Big Indian Creek mouth here. And when I zoomed in, I've, I've seen all this timber here, and I was like, oh, that looks amazing. And at the time, I had a castable deep, uh, deeper sonar. Now, you can see the light brown here, so that indicates it's shallow. And it really is. This is a huge bowl. The current is going this way. It hits this and creates a backflow. So this is a really cool spot. And you can actually park here. It's a park with a bathroom. And if we pull up the street view, that's what it looks like. So I know this is an okay spot to try. And if you get over on the bridge, there's the, the creek mouth. So you kind of get a lay of the land. That's a good example. But we got to pick somewhere new, guys, so let's do that. I'm actually going to go back up towards Cincinnati, and let's see what we can find uh, a little closer around. So I've been over here. You guys have seen me here before, the Licking River Mouth. And I also found this spot uh, doing this. So I've, I've seen that there was plenty of curbside parking, and this is another feature here. So this uh, staircase here isn't actually there anymore. It's uh, So this photo is old outdated. But you can see there's people fishing there right now, having a good time. So you know it's a popular spot. You can see the, the actual current, uh, the color changing of the water from the licking into the Ohio. And there's people over there fishing even too. So by, by gauging a street view, you can see where you could park. You can see what the, the bank lines look like. You can see what's around. And uh, give you some info. Now let's try somewhere new. So for this, I'm going to go into satellite just because there's a lot going on around the downtown area. And we're just going to kind of comb the bank line and see what we might be able to get access to. This would be cool. All these barges. Stuff falling off of them. The fish taking cover underneath it. But I don't think I'd be able to park there. Uh, there's a park here. I could park. But I don't know what all of this is restricted. So probably best to leave that alone. And once we get out of like the industrial stuff, or maybe even check the Kentucky side, we can see uh, what may be available there. Now this looks interesting. Looks like an old abandoned road, bridge nearby. Well, let me do a street view there. Nope. I mean, it's pulling up, but I don't think it's going to show exactly that. Yeah. That's just a different street. It's just trying to pull up what's close. That's probably one of these houses. Let's try right here. 
There we go. Okay, so see if I can peek around this bridge. There's the road. Gates, not cool. But it doesn't mean we couldn't like park here and walk under and fish around a bridge. So let's see what that looks back like from a sky view. So we know now there's a gate here somewhere. Looks pretty rocky. It's something to take a note of. So I'm going to ping this and I'll save it as, I'll put it as a green flag. That way we know that's a maybe. It would be kind of cool to fish around uh, some of the barges. I think this is a glitch. Is there anything around the Ohio side? So now we're just kind of calming both areas. Riverside Park. This might be nice. And we know that boat ramp now goes here. But uh, this caught my eye. And it looks like there's a trail from the gazebo. We got shade. We got rocks. So this might be something to look into. And I don't know if that's fenced off or not, but maybe if we could walk around here, maybe fish around this barge, that'd be cool too. So let's maybe make this our second spot. I'm gonna save this with a star. Spot number two. All right, now where else should we go? We got a third place to pick. Let's maybe, uh, the Little Miami is kind of fishy to me. I mean, I know it's really good. Uh, it's a non-dammed river, so blue cats can go all the way up it if they want when, when it's flooded up. I would love, love, love to fish this, this outside bend here. But it's all like factory property. I don't think I could get back there. I have seen a video where somebody parked here in this marina and they drove all the way through the woods to get out here but i did see no trespassing signs so they snuck back there and i don't want to do that but man that would be cool uh da, da, da. there's a cool outside bend i wonder if this trail has oh it does Okay, so not only do streets have street view, but sometimes the trailheads do too, the scenic trails. So let's see if we can get over some of this bush and kind of catch what it might look like. Looks like there's a levee in the way. Let's go back. Floodplain. This might be really nice, actually, because we know the, the Miami River is south, so the water is obviously going to be flowing this way. So maybe if we walk this trail here and kind of came through the branches and fished off of this, this would be cool to try. Let's see where this goes. So now we're actually right by that bend and the trail's letting us uh, see it. So we can see it through the trees. We know there's water there. I think I might actually try this spot. Looks very promising. Outside bends are always cool because you got a deep channel cut and we got some shallow here So fish are going to be hanging in this to get out of the current and We could like cascade some lines down to fan them out uh, at different distances into the river So let's see how we do with that What I do want to note is well, I'm going to mark it first Something else to consider is also the place itself. Like when it comes to parks, uh, some of them, some of them have certain hours. So it opens at 8 a.m., runs till 9 p.m. At least right now. So maybe no night fishing here legally, but definitely something to do during the day. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna mark that spot, and we got our three spots. So if we zoom out here, go back into satellite. We got one here, one here. And we got two possibilities here. So let's uh let's fine tune this down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it let it be in the comments for you guys. We'll take a vote. Do you want me to fish the deeper water with the supposed muscle bed off these piers? Or do you think the coves with the shallower water with the flats and a little hole here might be something to better try? Um, I think with here we might have a little bit more in terms of like boat traffic, but 
with the ramps and stuff, I know a lot of bait fish like to hang in these coves and cover, so that's a good food source. Versus uh, this one would probably be just a little more open water. So what do you think? I'm leaning more towards the smaller ramp, but if you guys want me to go to the bigger spot, we'll do that too. So we're going to leave that something to do in the comment section for the first video. And uh, when it comes time for me to go um, make that trip, um, I'll announce the winner before I shoot. So you guys know what to expect. So I think we'll go to the um, the, the little Miami River spot first, and then we'll hit the Ohio, and then we'll try East Fork last. So that'll be one, two, three. Um, if you guys have any questions about any of this, feel free to let us know in the comments, and uh, I'll help you with the best I can. I can uh, give you tips, tricks, uh, control commands, things like that. Um, if you have any other suggestions for this that I might have missed, feel free to put that in the comments too so other people can learn from it, myself included. And uh, we're all here to teach everybody how to have a better time fishing. So um, that's basically what we're going to do today for the first video. Uh, I appreciate anybody who's came over from Whisker Sticks, again, uh, migrating over here to Hardwick Angling uh, to keep going on adventures with us. And if you are watching for the first time, welcome. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to be doing a lot more. And it's not just going to be fishing videos. Uh, so we're going to do other tips and trick videos like this, how-to stuff, um, some cool guides, uh, life hacks, and everything in between. And maybe even some vlogging and live streaming. I do love to live stream uh, fishing shows or fishing trips. And we're going to be going to places like Catfish Conference. We're going to be traveling around a tri-state, fishing new bodies of water. So at some point, I'd love to hit up like Caesars Creek. I'd love to hit up Brookville Lake. Uh, so there's a lot of places to go to around here within an hour drive from my house and I want to cover them all for you. So if you got any suggestions on what you would like to see, let us know. If there's anything uh, you don't want to see, let me know too and we'll take it from there. But that's going to be it for this guys. Uh, I know the video was a little bit long. Appreciate you bearing with me. Um, I hope it helps you. Don't forget to subscribe. Got the notifications turned on so you always see everything as it comes up and uh, until then tight lines. God bless. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.